So far we have studied uniform circular motion and simple harmonic motion and though they may look quite different there are some similarities like both occur along a fixed path and repeat themselves and do so in fixed intervals of time so to say they are periodic motions. Now let us see a connection between them and that is going to give us a very powerful tool of analysis. So we will start with this circular path on it we will place a particle and we will set it in motion so that it moves along the circle with uniform speed. So it is executing uniform circular motion. Then we will take an arbitrary line. The direction is not important and then we are going to project the particle's position onto this line. A projector is nothing but a perpendicular dropped from the particle to the line. And then at the foot of this perpendicular or the projector we will be placing another particle, this purple particle which is constrained to move along the line. Now you can see the purple particle is executing motion restrained between two extremes and it is also periodic because it is after all a projection of a periodic motion. But let us check it further. So for that we will take two axes, a displacement axis and a time axis and we can plot the displacement against time by projecting the two. So here we are getting various points at the intersection of these two projectors. If we connect them then we will get the graph of displacement against time and one can see this is uh, like a single sinusoidal wave. So we are getting some strong indications that the projection of a uniform circular motion could be a simple harmonic motion. But let us confirm that with a more mathematical and rigorous analysis. For that let us start with a circle of radius r and let us select a coordinate frame with origin at the center and x and y axis as shown and we will place a particle on the periphery of the circle. The position of this particle will be described in terms of its polar coordinates say r and this angle theta or we can also use its rectangular coordinates x and y where the two are related as x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Now suppose the particle is set into motion around the circle with a uniform speed or a uniform angular velocity say omega. In that case this theta will not be a constant anymore but it will vary with time to be precise it will increase linearly with time. Then again this theta can be split into two parts. The position of the particle at time t is equal to 0 or when we started counting the time or reckoning the time or started our stopwatch and furthermore how much we moved in time. So this theta will be a sum of the initial angular position phi plus omega t the angle covered in subsequent time. So if we replace theta by omega t plus phi we will get the expression for circular motion where x is equal to r cos of omega t plus phi and y is equal to r sin omega t plus phi. Now we are going to project this circular motion along the x direction. So that will suppress this x component as shown here. Moreover there will be no point in calling this r a radius because we don't have the circle anymore. Instead we will call this that r as our amplitude and then our expression becomes y is equal to a sin omega t plus phi which is the equation of motion of a simple harmonic motion. So this conclusively proves that projection of a uniform circular motion is a simple harmonic motion. Lastly we are going to replace this particle in uniform circular motion with its position vector. As the particle moves around a circle the position vector rotates. Such a rotating vector is called a phasor. And phasors are very useful because we can do all the operations that we can do with vectors with phasors as well. For example, we can add two SHMs simply by adding the phasors that represent them.